Happy Halloween, you strange and wonderful weirdos. I'm John. I'm Stacy. It's Monday, October 31st. And here's why Halloween is strange. All right, so let's start with our first story about a discovery on Mars. You know, I was going to wear a costume. Were you? I am wearing a costume. Um, what's your costume? I'm a homicidal maniac. They look like everyone else. Well played, Wednesday <laughs> Adams. I can't wait to see that show. It's going to be a good show. Anyway. Okay. Mars. So Mars, Discovery. They did, uh, NASA did a press conference release the other day, and they were talking about, which is a great press conference release there. They had this host. She was fantastic. Oh my God, guys. She gave such amazing insights, such as this. Insight recorded a significant Mars quake. That's what we call quakes on Mars. Did you know that's what a Mars quake was? <laughs> you know, I try not to make fun of the less fortunate, but that's not even the best part. <laughs> the best part was it felt like a Saturday Night Live skit <laughs> when it got to the IP Freely name that we're dealing with. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. All right. I'm going to let you hear this woman's name as she introduces it herself. And you tell me. Lilia Posiolova. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we agree. Mm -hmm. Probably is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. continue on. All right. So anyway, uh, last Christmas Eve, this story stretches back to last Christmas Eve. There last was Christmas. the Mars quake that <laughs> there was the Mars quake that, you know, ah! we obviously know what that is already. Ah! <clears throat> I'm sorry. Oh no! <laughs> Is it stuck in your head oh, now? Oh no! I was I was blocking out Mariah so much. I'm that, sorry. That George Michael got in my head. <laughs> it's not even a good Christmas song. It's a horrible song. It's a terrible song. Last Christmas. It's a sad song. All right, this is a big deal for Mars and Pozo Lova. <laughs> All right, last Christmas Eve, there was the Mars quake. Ah! Sorry. Uh, and then a couple months later, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter found the source of the rumble, which turns out it was a meteor strike. Uh, it was near Mars's equator, and it was estimated to be one of the largest impacts observed on Mars. They were so excited about this. They were so thrilled because when they went to check it out, they noticed that huge boulder-sized chunks of ice blasted out of the crater. <sighs> now, up until now, underground ice hadn't been found in that region. It is the war one of the warmest areas on Mars. They had no idea that there was underground ice there. And here, big meteor strike, and out comes boulder-sized chunks. Yes, vice. So very, vice. very exciting. They're, they're super excited about it. Yes, they are. I mean, mm -hmm. well, there's a reason. With mm -hmm. all the admissions that we're wanting to do to Mars... right. One of the things we were going to use the ice for, and before, I mean, listen, there was not so long ago, mm -hmm. we didn't know if there was going to be any ice in the entire place. Dude. Exactly. So, I mean, this is where we could have the water and mm -hmm. right underneath the surface, right? So we all know that Mars used to look exactly like Earth before some weird cataclysm happened and blew everybody to hell. Right. Um, you know, it's just a theory, just a work in theory. Mm -hmm. There it happens to be like, I don't know. A half a planet out there in between us with the <laughs> with, i mean it's like somebody was playing a video game it was like here here was a planet and now you've got a bunch of rocks <laughs> um but you know the whole weird thing is with this water i mean they can easily get this ice and melt it up and yeah and have all kinds of good out of that mm -hmm. and it was right under the surface plus what kind of stuff it could have that have blown out because it was such a big strike. Right. And there, right. it's obtainable too. So there's a lot of cool things to it, but nothing oh, bigger yeah. than that water because water equals life equals sustaining ourselves on that planet longer. Mm -hmm. Schmonger. Yeah. I mean, it says they can convert it into not only water, but oxygen and hydrogen too. And it's in the lower latitudes. You know, they thought they were only going to get that into the poles. They had, so they had the nerdiest like woodies i've ever seen in my life they were so for good reason they were super happy yeah uh, it was like everybody that's involved in this was in charge of a different thing it's like hi i am vladisphere blavlagi <laughs> and i am over the mars hang glider mm -hmm. you know and somebody else is like i'm over the mars stomper truck you know <laughs> i'm over the left camera on the right flank right of the <laughs> which is awesome and what happened is 
they all just happen to catch this, mm-hmm. which is really, really cool. It is. So, all right. So let's move on and let's talk about some UFO, the UFO report that's coming out very soon. Now, there is going to be another um, report sent to Congress. It does say it's not clear how much of the new intelligence report is going to be made public. But supposedly there is an article out that is based on interviews with American officials that are familiar with some of the findings, right? And they agreed to speak, uh, you know, as long as they were kept anonymous, but they supposedly, whoever these people are, had some knowledge of this. Um, So it turns out that a lot of, it says many of the military UFO reports are just going to be classified as foreign spying or airborne trash. I believe the word weather balloon was thrown around. Yep. In this, in these reports, um, I do believe that a lot of them, uh, what they're saying, some of the newer reports. Now, this is just based on some of the, like in the past year kind of newer reports mm-hmm. that they've been classified as China, mm-hmm. you know, spying, surveillance, trying to figure out what we're doing, um, and airborne clutter. I don't know. I just the key. I to think this, this is probably the dumbest. It is. This was maybe the dumbest. Uh, weirdest, stupidest thing I've heard mm-hmm. in a very long time. And let me just say, I don't even want to waste any more time on it. I don't mm-hmm. care what the story says. Right. Um, this is stupid. And uh, we're not going to waste our time on it because you shouldn't waste your time on it or tax dollars or anything else. Everybody involved in it should be taken, drawn, and quartered by Shetland ponies. So it doesn't kill them, but it hurts a little bit. It's very <laughs> uncomfortable. Well, I just wanted to point out that uh, the wording on it, the way they say it is they say, uh, you know, many of the reports and most of them, but they do point out that a lot of the older ones are still unexplained. So, so you know, lead with that. They can't say. So lead with that. Yeah, they can't say that they've classified, you know, I, everything. The time for any of these BS cover-ups, mm-hmm. these BS, oh, well, that's, you know, trash. That's this. That's, okay, great. That stuff happens, Bob. Yeah, I'm sure there is trash. That's awesome. Okay, yes. The car going down the street, they're shining its lights through the window, going off the classic vase in the other room and coming back and hitting the ceiling fan just right, bouncing off the cat's ass, can make a shadow on the wall that looks like a demon. But it doesn't mean that we don't have a demon. <laughs> just because it can do that. And we know that... There's demons. We know that there is UFOs. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, we've got some UFOs. And so we have this build. Everything's good. Boom, 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 boom. All these UFO reports, all these things are happening. All these things are coming out. Everybody's walking, want, wanting disclosure from every part of everything. And then all of a sudden, you know what? I'm going to say that it's trash and I'm going to put the story out. They forgot the swamp gas. They yeah. forgot to mention swamp gas. That's I can't my believe favorite. they forgot that. I know. Somebody's going to lose their job. It's just ridiculous. It's, um, you know, there's so much great right now in the world of ufology. Mm-hmm. The James Fox. Yes. I James mean, Fox documentary. You need to watch that. My God. If you had not. Moment Mo- of Contact. Yeah, Moment of Contact. If you've not seen Moment of Contact yet, it's still going to cost you like 20 bucks on Amazon. Worth it worth every penny and then some you feel like you're giving your money to something good it's james fox continuously makes as a documentary filmmaker like the best documentary films that you'll ever see on the subject of ufos or uaps um he really goes to the places boots on the ground he puts the work in puts the years in talks to all the people involved in the story And the story itself, blow your mind. Plus, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a story emerging from this as well. Yeah, we might actually have some news on it in a couple of days. When will I? We'll see when he comes out with. Yeah, because he's working on Mm -hmm. um, the little, the girls quickly involved in that 1996 event. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, and uh, a creature, how would you say it? A creature. Yeah, there was a creature involved in this story and that the military captured all the eyewitness events you'll have to see the 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 thing but there was apparently footage like yes. maybe 30 seconds mm-hmm. but 30 seconds would be 30 seconds more than we currently have that's true so and the whole thing was recent enough that everybody's still 
around oh, yeah. and remembers. Um, so it's very compelling. Just amazing. Well, since uh, let's finish up this UFO news with something from Avi Loeb, something a little more uplifting. Okay. Okay. We like Avi Loeb. He's promising. Uh, so he has some new research. It's not yet peer reviewed. However, it's out. And he claims that there may be up to four quintillion alien spacecraft in our solar system. That's a lot of space junk, isn't it? And weather balloons. <laughs> so uh, Avi Loeb, he did some research with a colleague of his, and they looked at how many interstellar visitors they've already spotted. Okay. And then they used this detection rate. They did some math on it, and they determined by the size of the habitable space zone that we have that they could possibly be four quintillion objects out there that we haven't discovered yet that any one of them could possibly be alien spacecraft, sort of like the interstellar object that we already had. Whoa. <laughs> wow. And that's just in our stellar neighborhood. You know, like, I think when they first did it, they got this ridiculously astronomical number as though four quintillion is not an astronomical number. But they went and limited the scope to just the habitable zone near the sun, you know, so that it's something yeah, we could so potentially a, find. Yeah, so that it's and, a manageable uh, number. And so they're claiming that these are things that we should be looking for because they possibly could be spaceships so like the other one. of the four quintillion. Mm-hmm. Is it things we should be concerned about? I mean, is it like... I mean, he doesn't seem to think that any of them are concerning. Four quintillion. What if it's like, you know, are we talking four quintillion objects? Like yeah, just rocks? like interstellar objects that could possibly be alien or not. Like, you don't interstellar, know. Interstellar, though, that's... We've only had the one. Mm -hmm. And then we had the other one. Does he really think that it's a much more... I am the scientist. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's in there. Fair enough. <laughs> well, he claims that there, I mean, since we've had the Muamua, there have been three more detected by astronomers. So it's four in eight years. So going on finding four in eight years, I guess. We got up to four quintillion. Yes. Over the span of time. It's a long time. I you know, know what? I'll go with it. It's not yet peer reviewed. I'm just going <laughs> to say that. But he's always very optimistic and has an open mind with those things all right so let's move on let's let's have a nice story about a kentucky man oh a man from louisville okay well the story's from louisville he's from elizabethtown which is very close to louisville. yes it is uh so he gets to be on csi because he had a tiktok that he did every day for a year where he posed as a dead body on tiktok for 321 days trying to get a job on a show as a dead person and csi called him and he gets to be on an episode of CSI as the victim. Isn't that a walk-on extra thing? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what isn't that the thing in LA people don't even tell you when you when your friend moves to LA? And right, you, right. Like, hey, you got any work? Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm an extra in the new Batman movie, and uh, right, right. Oh, are you? That's cool, Batman. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. What scene are you gonna be in? Uh, I'm in the the busy street batmobile <laughs> right going down street oh that's cool man <laughs> that's cool uh y anything else yeah yeah I'm, I'm a dead body i'm i'm a i'm a dead body and a, sounds better if you say you're the victim i'm a victim yeah so that's three, cool though 321 days he spent doing his campaign to get a role for what he calls an unalive person uh, on any kind of movie or television show. He kept show. getting beat out by people from Chicago. And <laughs> after some show producers in Los Angeles spotted his hilarious like series of TikToks, uh, they contacted him. It's for CSI Vegas. He already went. They flew him out there to Hollywood. Killed they him. Had him. <laughs> yeah. They had him pose on the Hollywood Walk of Fame near one of the stars for one of the stars on the show, you just to be funny. You're comfortable there, sir. But uh, yeah, did, yeah, um... yeah. Appreciate this. Appreciate. It. I'm really excited, guys. I, I'm. Re What's the gun for? Oh, oh God. <laughs> So he said he spent two hours in makeup and he laid very still uh, on like a gurney or whatever. And he said he'd do the take a couple of times, but it was really fun. And why do you have to do the take a couple of times? I mean, times? I'm not like sure just because of him. I don't know. They did the, I guess there were people moving around. We're never him. bringing a Kentucky guy back. Uh, but he claims like, action. <laughs> <laughs> 
on his on his to his phone did ring once he said it was really embarrassing he had to, he forgot to turn his phone off dear god um but on his tiktok he does a lot of different ones where he's like face down in snow dirt grass rocks all different areas he said it's better if you have something in the picture that's moving like a dog walking through or something so that people know it's not a still photo like he's all into how to look like you're dead he said he can make it so you it doesn't look like he's breathing. He's gotten much better at it. I'm surprised that he it's even good. still has one. I'm sure sur- like people would report you and say, you know, <laughs> why do you have that dead body on your TikTok? Well, it's him every time. So <laughs> I guess after the first few, yeah, they kind of got the gist of it. They keep killing the same guy. <laughs> All right. So let's do this last story. This is from China. Oh. It's about a Chinese man who became seriously ill after eating a live crab that pinched his daughter. All right, so a man in China became seriously ill, and he couldn't figure out what was wrong. Uh, he's a 39-year-old man, so he went to see the doctor, and the initial checkup uh, showed changes in his like chest and abdomen, his liver, his digestive system, but they couldn't figure out the exact cause. So they kept asking him, have you eaten anything unusual? You know, Have you eaten any live game or anything? And he just was like, no. But then his wife happened to remember that a couple months before, um, he ate a live crab, and he was like, oh, yeah. Uh, he was with his daughter. They were near some water. The crab pinched his daughter. And as revenge, he picked the little crab up and put it in his mouth and ate it. And he ended up getting some uh, parasites, par- a parasitic infection in his blood. So he's going to be fine. They've given him some uh, medicine, some shots. He'll have to have some checkups still. How's the crab? <laughs> but I don't think the crab made it. <laughs> Whole crab in his mouth. I mean, shell and all, probably. I don't... Ugh. That was his revenge. So I totally understand this. Yeah. Because they asked him, he said, why'd you eat a live crab? He said, I wanted to take revenge for my daughter. It pinched her. He was angry. I totally get it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you would totally do that. I would have done that. I would have maybe tortured it first. <laughs> right, you know, right. Held it and let, let my daughter like <laughs> punch it. And- I don't think that eating live crabs is like a... Like, I think people do that for different reasons in China. Like, I think down in the article somewhere, it said that a woman was eating them as part of a beauty ritual. She thought she soaked them in, like, rice wine, and she thought it did something for her body. Um, But it just makes you sick. (laughs) So there you go. Revenge from a dad. Eat a live crab. Totally get it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, holy crap. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than uh, space trash. Mm-hmm. There was some pretty good stories. I hope everybody's having a safe, fun, incredible, awesome Halloween. Yep. That's why. Halloween is strange. 